they, they say a lot of research has shown that um, the satisfaction that we have in our lives and the quality of our lives are greatly linked to our uh, quality of our relationships. And like you said, how we treat uh, people. So I can imagine that, you know, if you're living just how you think about yourself and your day to day, if you have close relationships with family and friends, uh, you, you can probably have be a little bit more adaptable in your decision making. Or is if you have, like you said, those cortisol <clears throat> levels, because maybe you do feel isolated, maybe you do feel friction from all these poor relationships that you're just fumbling upon in life, it would make it more difficult to make quality decisions every single day. Are you seeing that as well? So I have a, an exercise that I've done with literally thousands of people to help people understand what you just talked about. Um, the last book that I wrote before Sapiens Reinvented, I wrote with Dr. Sheila Olson Walker. Um, and she's a brilliant behavioral geneticist. Um, and the last chapter is something I called getting home, going home. And I asked people to go to the end of their life and to create the tombstone that they would most want representing the life that they lived. And they can put anything on there. They're like six words or a couple sentences, but not a lot. And what shocks people, even Olympians, it's not how many gold medals they won, how many world records they broke. They don't want that on their tombstone. What invariably they put on that tombstone is things like integrity, honesty, goodness, caring, love, inspiration. It's your connection to other people, your treatment of other people. And once they see that, it, it's a game changer for everything. And then you work backwards and well, how am I going to get to that in the life that I now am? How will I earn that? That is not going to come just because you want it. Every day, you're going to have to invest in that. You're going to have to invest energy in making that happen. Mm -hmm. And so you all the way, what can I do today so that my tombstone reads exactly the way I want it to read? And it's not phony. It's the, it's the real person I was when I was here. And that right. is probably the single most powerful exercise in helping people understand what their purpose is, what their ultimate mission in life is. And um, I would encourage people to do it. It will it will shock you when you realize what is it you really want there. And all the energy you're putting into all this other stuff that you think is important will never make the cut. Wow, that that is a, that is a great one, because I, I think sometimes we seem to move up, move around our lives just through instinct for you know, we're over caffeinated, we're running away from the, what we fear we must do without actually making a concerted effort to think about what we actually want. Whereas you're thinking, do you really want on your tombstone that you were the best salesman at the software company for, for, for five years? Is that, or do you want that, that you were around for your kids uh, when they, when they, when all they, all you have to do is you. have them do that exercise and all, all of a sudden the clarity jumps out. And it is, it's not always comfortable, but it will give right. you where you need to be putting your energy from this day forward until you pass. Right. It's and, a prioritizing that... of what really matters in your life because our society uh, tells you achievement is what will make you a successful person. And all of our data suggests yes. exactly the opposite. It's right. who you yeah. were who you became as a consequence of the chase, and most importantly, how you treated others, how you cared for others, who you were to others when you were here, as you attempted to win four gold medals, as you attempted to win um, four championships in the NBA, whatever it is, right. that is the ultimate marker of success. Right.